Hello and welcome back. This is the second and final module in our two-part series on pain neuroscience at Seattle Housing Authority. My name is Corey and I'm a nurse on the Full Life Care Wellness Team and a doctoral student studying to become a family nurse practitioner. This program is my doctoral project for my nurse practitioner program. The purpose of my project is to evaluate if we can effectively teach pain neuroscience to SHA residents. Okay, so last time we met, we discussed four core concepts of pain neuroscience. Number one, pain is not a measure of tissue damage, but rather a protective mechanism. Pain is an experience that the brain delivers whenever it decides that it would be protective to do so. Number two, Pain is influenced by physical, psychological, and social forces. Your brain is looking around and collecting data to try to figure out how much pain to give you. The brain looks at your injury, your environment, your thoughts, your feelings, and then it decides how much pain to give. And again, when I say the brain decides, I'm talking about a process in the brain that is largely outside of our awareness. Number three. As pain persists and becomes chronic, it becomes an even less reliable indicator of the state of the tissues. Tissues tend to heal. Most injuries that occur in the body heal within three or four months. Typically with chronic pain, the injury is healed, but what's broken is the pain delivery mechanism in the nervous system. It should have turned off when the tissues healed, but that doesn't always happen. This overactive pain signaling is a huge component of chronic pain. So our task becomes, how do we quiet down the pain? Number four, the belief that tissues are in danger is associated with even more pain. Okay, this is a big one. A lot of the pain processing is outside of our awareness, but this is something that we do have control over. Our brain is listening to our thoughts and it's taking our beliefs into account when deciding how much pain to give. Our thoughts are so powerful when it comes to pain neuroscience. When we believe that our pain is never going to get any better, it becomes true. And the opposite is also true. When we tell ourselves, I'm safe, I'm healing, I'm healthy, I'm fit, the brain hears that and turns the volume on the pain signaling down. In today's video, we're going to focus mostly on this last point. How can we quiet down the pain signaling? And in order to quiet down the pain alarms, we need to understand our own pain stories. What is the narrative that we attach to our own pain experience? I want to tell you a personal story about the first time I learned about pain neuroscience. This is a true story. About five years ago, I attended a conference on pain neuroscience education. Basically the same concepts we're talking about today. A doctor I was working with had recommended that I go, and so I signed up because it just sounded sort of interesting. At this point, I had had low back pain for what seemed like forever. I couldn't remember a time that I didn't have a gnawing pain in my right lower back. At that time, I had many beliefs about my back pain. I believed that it had to do with the shape of my back or that I had overstretched something and it had never healed properly, or I would believe that my back was just out of alignment. I would go to a chiropractor and try to have them realign it. I figured it was just something I was going to have to deal with forever. Over the course of this two-day conference, I started to consider that maybe there was nothing actually wrong with my back, but instead there was something wrong with my pain protection mechanism. Maybe my alarm was overfiring and sending me pain signals even though my back was healthy. This was a revelation for me. I shifted my thinking and that night I laid in bed and told myself over and over, my back is healthy, my back is aligned, my back is healthy, my back is aligned. And for the next few days when my back would hurt, I would imagine that it was the pain mechanism over firing and that the tissues were all healthy. And every time I would accidentally revert back to that old way of thinking, I would argue with myself. So if I had the thought, my back hurts, I'm out of alignment. I would argue with myself and say, you're not out of alignment, you're perfectly in alignment, but your pain warning system is just broken and your alarm is going off. 
It took a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, for my pain to resolve completely. It's been five years and I no longer have chronic low back pain after suffering from it for a really long time. From time to time, maybe once a year, I'll feel pain again and I immediately start to tell myself, you're okay, your back is healthy, and it always goes away. I tell this story just to share that I'm not teaching pain neuroscience because it's weird or interesting. I'm teaching because with my whole heart, I believe that it works. Okay, at this point, you might be thinking, well, your back was healthy, but my knee is bone on bone. Or you're thinking, but I have a slipped disc in my back. And yes, that might be true. But also, what if these very thoughts are making the pain alarm turn on? Even if there is an injury, these thoughts could be making your life more miserable than it needs to be. Remember, the purpose of pain is to protect you. It's not a measure of tissue damage. It's a measure of how worried your brain is about you. There are no specialized pain nerves that travel up the nervous system into the brain. The nerves don't send pain to the brain like our culture tends to believe. Instead, they send a message that there might be danger. They say, hey brain, something just happened out here in the world, why don't you look into it? And the brain receives that danger message and decides if pain would be helpful to you or not. If the brain decides pain would be helpful to your safety, it sends it. All pain comes from the brain. And by all pain, I mean all pain. I'm talking about severe pain, mild pain, cramping pain, shooting pain, you twist your knee, you break your arm, all pain in the world is created by the brain. I want to introduce the concept of a thought virus. A thought virus is any thought, true or not, that makes your pain worse. Here are some examples of thought viruses. It's bone on bone in my knee. My knee is grinding down to nothing. The slipped disc in my back might move. Here's my thought virus. My back is out of alignment or the very common belief that pain will never get better. Remember, our goal is to quiet the pain signal. We want less pain. It's not important if these thoughts are true or not. So thinking that our knee is grinding down every time we walk is going to increase our pain. Try arguing with yourself. My knee's not grinding. It's safe for me to walk. It's healthy for me to walk. This is good for my knee and for my health. See if you can get the pain alarm to quiet down. If you have a slipped disc and you worry about it a lot, say to yourself, it's not slipping, it's stable, and try to believe it. And this is one particularly harmful thought virus. In order for my pain to be real, there has to be tissue damage. This is false. Your pain is real no matter what the cause is. I personally believe in the neuroscience perspective that pain is caused by a combination of many things, not just your tissues, but also your stress, your brain wiring, your previous experience with pain, and so on. And I believe the neuroscience perspective that when you have had chronic pain, the nerves increase their resting level of excitement, which means that the longer that you've had pain, the more sensitive the pain alarm system becomes. But if you tell me your pain is severe, I believe you. I don't care what the x-rays, MRIs, or doctors say. If you tell me you are suffering, I believe you. Just because you choose to combat thought viruses doesn't mean that you're not really hurting and that the pain's not real. The pain is in the nervous system, but it is still very real. My goal is to help you feel less pain and to suffer less. Okay, here's where it gets tricky. You have to identify what your specific thoughts are about your pain. There is no one size fits all. When you think about your pain, what do you think is the cause? Where were you when your pain first started? Like what was happening in your life? It's common for people to think back about their life and realize that their pain began around a particularly stressful life event, like the loss of a job or the death of a loved one. Emotional suffering can scare the brain into giving you pain because the brain is not always great at distinguishing emotional threats from actual threats. Now that you know about the pain alarm system, do you think that that could be a factor in your pain? Can you add this to your thinking about your pain? What thought viruses are attacking you and making your pain worse? 
Can you start to think about the pain alarm system when you think about the pain you experience? The Why Do I Hurt handbook that came with this course has some great information for helping you figure out what your pain story is. So last week I asked you to choose a physical activity to do for a few minutes every day. When pain occurs, I asked you to think about that pain as your alarm system over firing to protect you. Now that you've practiced that, can you start to identify your specific thoughts? Maybe you're walking and your knee starts to hurt. Stop and try to notice what are your thoughts? What are you telling yourself in that moment? Do your thoughts take into account the neuroscience that suggests that pain is very, very complicated? Or are you stuck just thinking about the tissues? As part of your participation in this course, you received the Why Do I Hurt workbook. I would strongly recommend reading this short workbook and working through some of the exercises over the next couple of weeks. It's very easy to slip back into the old way of thinking about pain. Reading this book can help solidify some of the information that we discussed these past few weeks and to help you reduce the pain that you have in your body. Remember, the research shows that people who understand their pain have less of it. And as always, if you have questions, concerns, or you just want to share how it's going, please reach out to me or another member of the wellness team. Let us know what thought viruses you've found. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for participating in our Pain Neuroscience course at Seattle Housing Authority. If you're willing to participate in the analysis of this class, please remember to complete the final survey which tests your understanding of pain neuroscience. Thank you.